Hey everyone, this is Amy from Irresistible University, and today I want to talk with you about the real cost of waiting for the wait. So first and foremost, let's unpack what that even means. What I am talking about is when you are putting things on hold in your life, when you are waiting for this magical moment to happen for you, you believe that if you could just get to your goal weight, if you could just be in a certain size, everything in your life would magically fall into place. You would have confidence, you would have high self-esteem, you would have your dream relationship, your dream career, whatever that like magic dream is that you've created for yourself, you have convinced yourself that as long as you wait for the wait, all of that is there at the end of the rainbow waiting for you. But what you haven't taken into consideration is that it's not going to just magically pop up because you get to a certain size or you get to a certain weight. Because here's the deal. If you don't learn how to deal with your stuff, if you don't learn how to drop the emotional weight, if you don't learn how to get rid of the fat girl mindset that you're carrying around, that stuff doesn't like go away because, oh my God, you weigh 125 pounds now. Okay. And so what happens when you're waiting for the weight is someone says to you, hey, girl, like we should go on this beach vacation this summer. And you're like, mm, I don't know about that. I'm kind of busy. I have a lot going on. And you have told yourself, you've convinced yourself that now is just not the right time. But next summer, oh, yeah, girl, next summer, I'm really going to be ready for that vacation because I'm going to like lose all my weight. I'm going to have the perfect body, but mm, it's not going to happen this year. Right. Or I have and I experienced this and I've seen this in my community. And this one breaks my heart probably the most is I have heard from people in the community, heard from women that are putting Starting a family on hold for the wait. And I experienced this um, in my pregnancy journey as well. And it was one of the things that made me like really hesitant to get pregnant is I didn't want to be the fat girl who was pregnant. But when I sat down with myself and my husband and we had this conversation about if we don't decide to have kids, are we going to regret it? And we both said yes, like right at the same time. And so it can be something as, as small as wanting to wear a bathing suit, wanting to go on a beach vacation, to something as serious as putting off starting a family, putting off getting out of an abusive relationship, putting off taking better care of yourself. And so it's going to show up for each of you differently, but I want you to understand that's what I mean when I say when you're waiting for the wait. You're waiting and then you're not doing anything to get the weight off. So you think like what the weight's just going to fall off and then it's just going to fall off and then you're just going to get all the things that you've ever wanted. It doesn't work that way. We have to work for what we want. Right. And so when we talk about waiting for the weight, I want to discuss with you how that shows up in your life. So there's a couple of different ways. So number one it's showing up in your life by you playing small. What does that even mean? Playing small means you know you're capable of so much more. You know that your life is not meant to just be mediocre. You know that you have all of this untapped potential that you just haven't like tapped into because you're afraid and you're afraid to be seen because to show up means people have to see you. You have to be vulnerable, right? And when you're in this place of not feeling good about your body and waiting for the weight, you're not showing up because in your mind, your thought process is that, well, if I show up with all of my personality, with all of my potential, and I actually take up space in the world, people are gonna see my body and how big I am. People are gonna see what I actually look like. Here's a news flash for you. They already see what you look like. So by you thinking that you're playing small, and, and here's what you do when you're playing small. When, here's what I mean by this. Instead of showing up confident, your head up, your shoulders back, walking into a room like you freaking own it, you walk in there, you scuff your feet, your voice is like this, and 
you kind of hunch your, your shoulders over and you're looking at the ground and you don't want to, you don't want anybody to know what you're really thinking. And if you have to share anything, you apologize for it. You rate, so say you're in a business meeting and you're like, sorry, um, but I have something I kind of like to share. You say kinda, you say sorry, and you're not owning your message. You're not owning your opinion because that is scary for you. That is vulnerable for you because to do that and to be so sure of what you're saying means here I am, all of me. And you're you're just like putting it all out there, right? And so that's what it means. So when you're waiting for the wait, this shows up in these different ways. You're playing small, whether it's in a business meeting, whether it is in conversations with your spouse, your kids, your friends, whatever. Think about that in your own life. How are you showing up and playing small when you know you have so much more to offer? And maybe you don't know that yet, but I know that you do have more to offer, okay? You also, um, this also shows up by you not even showing up, right? By you not showing up to the table and doing the work that you need to do. And this is what it kind of looks like. I hear this all the time. I know exact, so let's think about this as like weight loss. I know exactly what to do and I know exactly how to do it. I'm just not doing it. Yeah, you're not doing it because you're not showing up for yourself. Not showing up for yourself is like standing yourself up for dates. And would you ever do that to other people? And you probably are doing that to other people right now because you don't want them to see you. And so not showing up for yourself is when you are consistently letting yourself down. And I will tell you right now, this is one of my, my big tips and secrets. The number one way to crush your confidence, to crush your self-esteem, to shatter all of it, is to not show up for yourself. And how that also looks is, oh, I'm going to like, I'm going to start eating healthy, you know, starting on Monday. It's always the start on Monday stuff. And then by Tuesday, you're off the rails. And you've, again, broken a promise to yourself. You've broken a commitment to yourself. You're not showing up and doing the work. Believe it or not, I even see this in my paid coaching group where the women come in, they're excited, they're ready to do the program. A couple weeks go by and they ghost. They ghost. They disappear because they are reverting back to those old habits. And those old habits are telling you you're not worthy, you don't deserve it. And because of that, you just stop showing up for yourself. So I hope you understand what I'm saying by that and what that means. Um, not showing up for yourself is talking to yourself like shit, is talking to yourself in the mirror and, and calling yourself every name in the book. Look at you, you fat pig. You're so gross. You're so nasty. I can't believe you gained this weight again. I can't believe you look like that. You don't deserve blah, 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 blah. That is not showing up for yourself. Showing up for yourself is showing up, doing the work, even on the days where you look in the mirror and you're not feeling it, even on the days where you'd rather shove your face in a bunch of cupcakes, but you eat the salad and the clean eats anyways, okay? So the other way that waiting for the wait shows up for you, it shows up when you convince yourself that you don't deserve it, right? So how many of you have done this to where... Um, Let's say there is a, let's just use work as an example here. Let's say there's a promotion open at work and you're like, yes, I know. Like I am like, I got this in the bag. I have all the qualifications. I'm actually overqualified. Like I got this. And you tell yourself you're going to apply. You're going to do the thing. And then all of a sudden you start to back out and you start convincing yourself that you don't deserve it. No one's ever going to listen to me. I can't hold a room's attention. I don't have enough confidence. No one's going to listen to the fat lady. No one's going to want to hear from me. My opinions don't matter. And you start shit talking yourself because you're not showing up for yourself. And you back yourself out of this thing that you actually really wanted because you've convinced yourself you don't deserve it. Right? 
Um, and you do this in many ways, even in the weight loss spectrum. If you are, you know, wanting to take better care of yourself, you're wanting to be more healthy. And then by five o'clock on Friday, you're ordering all the food, shoving your face in it and binging and emotionally eating all the things. It's because somewhere in here, you feel that you don't deserve to show up for yourself. You don't deserve to take good care of yourself. And you don't deserve to put yourself first. Okay. Um, so that is how waiting for the weight shows up in certain ways. It means you're playing small. You are not showing up for yourself in many areas of your life. And you've convinced yourself that you don't deserve anything good. Now, the reasons, the reasons that you're doing these things, let's talk about that. Okay. So <laughs> we kind of we, we kind of touched on this, but I want to dive a little bit deeper. And one of those fears that you have, because all of this is coming from some type of fear, right? And one of your fears that you have is that you are afraid to be seen, which we talked about that, because to be seen, especially so we're talking about when you are uncomfortable in your own skin, you don't like the way you look. I don't care what you weigh, because let me tell you one thing, fat girl mindset. You could be 220, 320, 120. It doesn't matter. That stuff doesn't just go away because you weigh a certain number. I have plenty of clients that you look at them and think, what do they have to complain about? This stuff is an epidemic in women. It just is. And we got to change that. And so it's a fear of being seen because to be seen for your, um, to be seen for your contributions, to be seen for your opinions, to be seen for the like what you contribute to the world means people have to physically see you. And in your mind, you don't want that because you've already created a story about what they think of you. Even though that's a story, that's a thing that you created and you probably don't even have any evidence that they're actually thinking these things. And so you make everybody out to be this bad person because of something that happened to you 10 years ago or 20 years ago or that asshole on the seventh grade uh, PE class or whatever, right? We all have our stories. And when you have to show up, you have to be seen. And so you're either going to be seen like this and there with your head down or you're going to be seen like you fucking own the room. Pick your poison. Which one do you want? Um, the second thing is you are afraid of rejection. What if they don't like me? What if they don't like my ideas? What if nobody wants to hang out with me? What if I call my friends to go have drinks and they tell me they can't go? What if um, somebody cancels on me? What if that guy that I met on, on online um, cancels the date? And then what if I go on the date and he rejects me because he thinks I'm too fat? Here's a news flash for you. You will be rejected. I don't give a shit how amazing you are. I don't give a shit how beautiful you are, how thin you are, how great you are at your job. You will get rejected. It is part of like this human journey. Okay. It's going to happen. So you either sit there and think about all the what ifs that are going to happen and how you're too afraid to take action and put yourself out there because you might get rejected or you take a chance on yourself knowing that you will get rejected, but you're going to build up the resilience to be okay with that when it happens. Okay. Because you're already sitting there feeling miserable anyway. So for me personally, I'd rather be sitting here knowing I got rejected and be like, all right, cool. That's just information. That is information that this asshole is not for me and I am not for them. I'm going to move on to something better because I deserve it. Not I'm such a piece of shit because they don't like me and they, they turn me down and they didn't want to hang out with me. And that means I'm a loser and I'm ugly and I'm fat and I'm bad and I'm this and I'm that. Stop doing that because it's not getting you anywhere. It's only keeping you stuck in this like yo-yo diet body hate shame cycle. That's it. So the next thing that we, we, um, 
our fear that we have of why we're not showing up, why we're waiting for the wait. It's a fear of criticism. What if I show up and stand up for myself today? What if I stand up for myself when that person who's always trying to put me down in the meeting and I stand up for them? What if they come back and they say to me, well, you're fat. What if um, my spouse who treats me like shit, if I actually tell them it's not okay, what if they call me fat? What if they call me names? And so there's this fear of criticism. What if I put myself out there for this job or this career and people and the trolls come for me? You guys, like my job is online. I share all of this stuff online. I could sit here and worry about the freaking trolls that aren't like woman enough or man enough to come to my face and say the things that they say. Or I could sit here on all of this information, on all of these things that I have to help you because I'm scared of one or two freaking little trolls hiding under the bridge. Like that would be a disservice to you because that is me allowing my own bullshit to get in the way of the help and the support that I know I provide for so many other women. And so I want you to think about that in your own life. What is your fear of criticism? How is that? It Because it's actually really selfish. It is. Because how is that actually preventing other people in your life from getting the best of you? What is it that you have to offer the world that you're holding on to, that you're sitting on because of what some asshole troll might, might, might say to you, right? Um, and here's the other, like, newsflash. People are going to say shit about you. When you have the confidence, when you take the time to show up and be seen and put yourself out there, yes, you will get rejected. Yes. People will talk shit about you to your face, to your back. And yes, people are going to either like you or not like you. And the thing is, you have to be okay with that and be okay with whatever happens, knowing that you did the best that you could do to put yourself out there to stop waiting for the wait. You wear that bikini to the beach and you're not a perfect size too. Sure, maybe people are going to giggle under their breath, but you know what? When you are so effing confident and secure of who you are and what you do, you can look at those people, I can look at those people now, and I feel sorry for them. I feel pity on them. Because I don't have body image issues, they do. If they think it's cool to laugh and giggle and snicker at someone who is at the gym working out that's not skinny, who's at the beach wearing a bathing suit who's not skinny, but look, I'm having fun. I'm not sitting over there gossiping and talking shit about people because those people, it's just so true. Like they are miserable, awful people. And it says way more about them than it says about you. So the other thing is a fear of failure. Well, if I put myself out there and I go on this date, I might fail and ruin the whole thing. If I don't, if I apply for this job and I can't live up to it, I'm going to fail. If I put myself out there and I fail, that's like the, the other stuff that's going on is this fear of failure. If I start this new healthy lifestyle, what if I can't do it perfectly? You won't. People see my program. What if I can't do it? What if I'm not going to be perfect? I don't expect perfection. That is the last thing that I would ever expect from you. And so that's the other reason why you self-sabotage when you're trying to lose weight. Because you think that, ooh, I got this new shiny diet that I'm going to follow. And if I follow it perfectly for the next five months or whatever it is, all the weight's going to come off. And I can't deviate from the plan. Well... When you have that line of thinking, you're not allowing yourself the grace of failure. And I'm here to tell you, again, you're going to fail. You're not going to eat perfectly every single day. You're not going to love what you see in the mirror every single day. You're not going to wake up and feel irresistible every single day, even if you have gone through my programs. It, it's a process. And going into it, again, you have to understand that you're going to have really amazing days and you're going to have really shitty days. The difference becomes you being able to look at a shitty day or a failure and say, okay, 
I could have done better with boom, boom, boom. And I'm going to learn from this that next time I, I want to do it differently. And it's not a failure. Okay. Because failures, like we don't escape our entire life without failures, without rejection, without criticism. So you're allowing these things to keep you paralyzed. You're allowing these things to keep you stuck, waiting on the weight, blaming everything on your weight and your size and your body because you have these other fears that are actually underneath being seen, right? And um, this stuff will keep you stuck, you guys. Like I know from so many of you, you're on this cycle right now. And I am here to tell you that you have a choice. You have a choice. You either stay doing what you're doing, feeling miserable, being afraid of everything, being afraid of failure and criticism and trolls and all this kind of stuff and feeling miserable about yourself at the same time. Or you come to the other side and you realize, okay, I'm not perfect. These things are going to happen, but I'm going to try anyway. I'm going to take imperfect action anyway. I'm going to go after what I want anyways, knowing that the result may not be this perfect magical solution and that's okay. All right. So that is really, that's really it. Um, and I want you to start thinking about this more because there's nothing more sad to me than waking up one day and realizing how much time you've wasted, how much of your potential is wasted and having regrets in your life because you do not get this time back. It's gone. It's gone. So how do you want to spend it? Right? How do you want to spend it? So if this is really hitting a nerve with you and it's resonating, you're like, all right, Amy, like, how do I do this now? Well, I can help you with that. Um, I have a signature program that goes through how to do these things, how to get out of the yo-yo diet, body hate, shame cycle. And so what I would love for you to do, if, if this is really resonating with you and you're ready to start making some changes, is I want you to sign up for my free training. The link is down below. And on that training, I'm going to share with you my three secrets to look and feel irresistible at any size. And I'm also going to share with you in that training more about my signature program to see if that is a good fit for you and where you're at in your journey. So the link is down below. Put your email, put your name. It's that easy. And any questions that you have, any thoughts that you have, please comment with those down below. And until next time, stay irresistible. Bye, guys.